I'm officially back from 23rd Garage and they did a killer job rebuilding the rear end on my 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. Yuri was able to fix the rear door which never used to close. I mean, check this out. It's literally perfect. But that's nothing. Wait until you see the back of this car. I finally have a working rear hatch. Check this out. It opens and closes like a dime. It couldn't be any more perfect. They were even able to align the tail lights, the bumper, and the quarter panel perfectly and seamlessly. It's like it was never in an accident with these OEM gaps. Now, even though most of the hard stuff is officially over for the Volkswagen, it doesn't mean I'm done working. There's still plenty of things that need to get done. Going to Tennessee and working with 23rd Garage was honestly an incredible experience. I was able to learn so much about framework and just the car rebuilding niche. And it's also given me the confidence to just keep going in this space. This car and my skills have come quite a long way from the beginning. I remember as if it was yesterday first taking delivery of the Volkswagen Golf R and realizing that I had my work cut out for me. Over 120 fault codes, a blown dash, all the airbags deployed, and even the front end and rear end of the car needing repair. It's truly fascinating to see how far we've come and grown on this channel. And it's even more fascinating to think we're almost done with this project. Now the goal for today is to actually paint the inside of the Golf, as you guys can see here. It's actually not painted fully. I'll show you a better close up here. And also we need to paint what's behind the bumper to the lapis blue, lapis blue uh, paint color. In the last episode, you saw Yuri paint over the bare metal that was over here with some self etching primer. And then we also seam sealed over all the gaps. Unfortunately, we can't leave it this way, uh, obviously. And we need to repaint over this with a final coat of primer. And then we have to repaint paint what's under this bumper, which means everything that's in the back of this car needs to come out. Now, lucky for me, my local Napa store had everything needed to repaint the rear end of this car. We have the scuff pad, we have the base e-coat primer to go over the bare metal in the rear as well and to cover over the seam sealer. Then we have a custom made paint, my Lappies Blue base coat. And then the last is my 2K clear hardener, which is super cool and obviously some drop cloth so we don't get blue paint everywhere. But they did a great job. So definitely check out Napa Auto Parts store for custom paint that can be put in a spray paint can. So in order to repaint the back of the car, everything must come off. Tail lights, bumper, and obviously everything in the trunk needs to come out. As you can see, I pretty much have everything needed to complete the rear end of the car, but I did notice a few little things that I need to order that got damaged during the accident. Now with the rear empty, it was time to vacuum all the dust, all the dirt, and even all the weld splatter from the trunk. Obviously, I can't paint any of that. Pretty much when it comes to painting, 90% of the job is prep work and only about 10% is actually painting. Now since I will also need to paint the frame rail end, I went ahead and took off the wheel so that I would have better access to underneath the car. Next step for prep was to scuff up the surface with a scuff pad. And this helps smooth out imperfections as well as gives the paint something to grip onto. Next, I used a clean microfiber and some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface of any dust or oils. Then it was time to painters tape the border, lay out the plastic drop cloth, and re-tape over everything so that the drop cloth doesn't move.
Alrighty guys, so the area has been prepped, scuffed, and cleaned, and it's now ready for the easy coat the, to match the factory primer. Just wanna show you what that looks like really quick. All right, so as you guys can see, this is kind of what the factory primer looks like. This is just overspray. There's a little bit of blue overspray here, but ideally, if you like look up in the corner here where we didn't put self-etching paint, you can see there's kind of a green tint to it underneath the overspray of blue, and this is pretty much an identical match to it, but I have to go over now and spray paint everything that you see here that's black, as well as this wall here. This all needs to be the color of that Easy Coat Primer, including the frame rail, which you can see is under here, which we also seem sealed. So originally, I was just going to use another can of self-etching primer like Yuri did, but the employee at Napa actually put me onto a product that I've never heard of. It's called Sem Easy Coat. You see, unlike self-etching primer, Easy Coat is a direct-to-metal coating that matches the color and even the gloss of the factory primer and E-Coat colors. Now, it comes in nine OEM colors and is even OEM recommended, so I decided to give it a try. Now, E-Coat or electrophoretic coating is a process most car manufacturers use to prevent the frame of the car from rusting. They basically immerse the entire frame in a vat of like this water-based solution that contains a paint emulsion. They then send an electric current through it that causes the paint emulsion to condense and form over the car. And I thought this was pretty cool that I could replicate this or fill it in. I use one light coat of the E-Coat and then two to three wet coats on the car, basically until I couldn't see any more of the seam sealer. I waited about five to 10 minutes between each coat. Alrighty guys, so I just finished the three coats of Easy Coat Primer. It came out incredibly well. Now it's time to use the base coat, the Lapis Blue base coat on here. Hopefully we have enough paint, it should be, to paint the outside. That's really all we need to do. The inside's gonna stay factory primer, this color, with a little bit of overspray. But everything else, this whole front wall here, this rear apron, and the side, is going to be Lapis Blue. Hopefully we have enough. If not, I gotta go pick up another can. So fingers crossed. I called around to maybe three or four Napa auto parts stores near me. And luckily I found one that could make custom automotive spray paint, which is pretty cool. All I needed to do was tell him my paint code or bring the car or a body panel in for him to paint match. It was quick and simple and I had my custom automotive paint within 20 minutes and it only cost me around 24 bucks. Perfect for a small project like this and I highly recommend you guys take advantage of it if you have a project at home. I did three base coats similar to the primer, one light and two wet coats, waiting about 10 minutes in between for the paint to flash. check it out so this is three to four base coats on the car it might look a little bit lighter than the paint but that's only because i have the ios set a bit high because it's super weird with the lighting from the uh the garage but you can actually see it came out incredibly well for a can keeping my distance and doing three to four even coats there's no running on this at all. Nothing ran on it, so it looks really good. And then uh, it's gonna be time to start applying this. So I just gotta shake this can up a bit and get it ready. I believe it's like two minutes of shaking like this. Then we pop the hardener in the bottom, shake it another two minutes. Then we do two to three clear coats over this and uh, leave it to dry overnight and put the car back together in the morning. 
So unlike your typical can of Rust-Oleum 1K Clear that you can get from any hardware store, Spray Max 2K Clear is entirely different and also twice the price, around $24 a can and for good reason. Now in summary, the significant difference between a 1K and a 2K clear coat is indeed for a catalyst to dry, hence why I have to crack the bottom of the can to release the hardening agent and then mix it. You see, a 2K clear coat provides a far, and I mean a far, superior level of protection compared to a cheap can of 1K Clear. Trust me, uh, I, I know, I, I've, I've had enough experience. 2K Clear is what's used on cars, and it actually prevents scratches and scrapes, and is even UV resistant. So I highly recommend this if you plan on doing anything to your car, like restoring carbon fiber, or even some sort of panel touch-up. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to all the products down below, where you can check it out or even pick one of these up. But it's not just online. You can also get this at your local Napa Auto Parts store as well. Alrighty guys, so it is a new day and honestly, this paint came out incredibly well. I let it dry overnight for about 15, 16 hours and it is freaking identical. I am so incredibly surprised how well like spray paint cans did. Remember, I did get the color matched, so it is pretty identical, but I'm more impressed with the clear coat. I mean, this is 2K clear, a two-part hardener, and it worked incredibly well. So I highly recommend using this stuff if you're gonna do some at-home projects maybe doing some carbon fiber respray, stuff like that. But I'm gonna pull this car outside, take the plastic off, and I wanna show you how incredibly good it came out. I'm so impressed with the product here for spray paint cans. I don't know, man, it's it's just pretty incredible. So let's pull it outside and then we'll, uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, well, I just realized that I can't pull it outside because there's no wheel on the car. So I'm gonna clean up this section here. There's a few things that need to go back on the car and then I'll put the wheel on. I have to put this fender liner and charcoal filter back in over here and that will be good to go. But you can see we even primed the new frame rail end here. So everything looks good. So uh, yeah, let me just put all this back on and then I'll pull it outside. The first thing that needs to get reinstalled is the charcoal filter. Luckily, it's super easy to take on and off, which isn't always the case for some cars. All you have to do here is push it in place and then slide it up into the clips and it just stays there. And then there's just one like reinforcement bolt at the bottom and that's pretty much all you have to do to reinstall it. Now the three tubes you see at the top, one black, one white, and then one clear, the clear is a drain tube and the others you have to clip back into place at the top of the charcoal filter. Now the drain tube is what connects to your gas cap reservoir area in case of overspill. So this doesn't get plugged into anything and I just routed it out of the way. Then I could put the fender liner back on which had a super small tear in it. I just held it in place with some duct tape. No big deal, I can always patch it if it comes off later down the road. But there's a few torque screws around the fender liner and once those were in, that's pretty much it. All right guys, so check it out. I mean, that can't be more of a perfect paint match in the gloss. I'm gonna have to turn the car around so you get a better view, but it's identical. And I'm very impressed with how it all turned out. I mean, even picking it up, it's so nice. I'm gonna turn this around so we can get a better view, but everything looks how it should. Looks really nice. All right, so here is another angle. I'm still getting the shade, but I mean, look at that sparkle and that color. That clear coat is absolutely incredible. And you can see there's literally no runs. Like it went down so smooth for a paint can. I'm actually really freaking surprised at how nice and shiny and cool this thing came out. Like you really can't even tell.
absolutely incredible. I'm really impressed. You tell me what you think down in the comments below, but look at that. I mean, that's freaking sick. All right, so I'm extremely impressed with how the rear came out. And now that everything is done and official, it's time to actually start to reassemble the back for good. Now there are a few pieces, like some clips that are broken that are still coming in the mail that me and Yuri figured out. But for the time being, majority of this rear end can get put back together. I can't believe it's finally time to assemble the rear end. The first thing I did was put the plugs back into the belly pan and then I could put the tail lights back on. Next was the trunk lock, and then I could re-thread the wiring harness back to where it's supposed to be, which is actually through the floor and then out and around the car. I put the rear air vents back on, and then I started working on the rear reinforcement. This is held down by a bunch of bolts, but before I screwed it down, I had to put the blind spot radar detectors back on first because the screws thread through that. These go on either side of the car. Once in place, I tightened down the reinforcement bolts, and then I could put the last bolt back on either side of the blind spot bracket. Next up was the trunk seal, the rear bumper brackets, and then the bumper support rail. Now I actually forgot to run the wiring harness through this, so I had to take it back off and reassemble it. The orange clip you see is what plugs into the keyless entry antenna, which is underneath the support rail. Alrighty guys, so I think I'm gonna end the episode here. We got a lot done this episode. The entire rear end of this car is completely put back together. Everything is plugged in. Everything that I have purchased has fit and is aligned perfectly. Everything is good to go. I am waiting on a few more pieces left. I don't know if you guys saw on this side of the car, on the right side, I need that little vent to come in as well as I'm waiting on a new bumper bracket. And then I'm also waiting on a new trunk lid to go in the inside, like a trunk mat on the inside, since we had to cut that. I don't know if you guys remember in the episode on 23rd Garage, we had to cut this floor mat, you can see. So it don't look too good. I could put it back in, but I'd rather just put a new one in because this one looks terrible. But once all that's done, there's a few more things left that I want to explain what we need to do. So as you guys can see, the bumper is back on and everything is back inside of it. Like I said, a few more pieces I need to come in here. So the bumper is going to be coming back off. Then everything is plugged in. I am waiting on some new pieces before we reinstall the interior here. I need a new floor mat. As you can see, this one we had to take a huge chunk out of it and it was all mangled up anyway. So that needs to come in. And then once we're done, we can start to reassemble everything in the inside here because I got all these parts that need to go back in. And then we're gonna need to put the side skirts back of the car that we took off. And then we need to put the exhaust back in. And then we need to do a build cost update because it's been a while. So with that being said, if you're liking this content, then make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Spray paint. Pull me closer.